Hi, everybody. I want to talk to you today about serving God. <clears throat> Specifically, I want to talk to you about the differences uh, in our message, about what are we talking about when we're serving God. Are we talking about what we do for God or what God did for us? Forgive me, I have a polyp uh, on my vocal cords, so it's straining my voice a little today. But this is an important message I think that needs to be brought up. Have you ever noticed that sermon after sermon, Facebook post after Facebook post, it, there's this never ending bragging about serving God. I'm serving God. I'm serving the Lord. I'm, 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 I'm doing this. You see that word, of course, I, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm. Um, and I want to try to break this down a little bit for you. And I want to give you an analogy of a bus um, to help drive this home. And first of all, let me say this. You know, it's awesome to serve God. It's part of the natural Christian life to honor God. I mean, our hearts and affections should be crazy for God when we know what he did for us. But there's a difference in honoring God and bragging about the things that we do for God and pitching sermon and Facebook posts and blog posts every day talking about the bulk of the discussion about us. And then we sprinkle in at the end, oh yeah, but God's pretty awesome too. That's really what I was going at. No, that should be the bulk of your message. But I want you to imagine, um, you know, first of all, sorry, let me back up. There's a book in, uh, in the book of Acts. Acts tells us this. The Bible says, God is not served with human hands as if he needed anything. In other words, he's God. He made you. God is not expecting you to pay him back. God is not needy. He doesn't need anything from us. Our serving is not a payment system. It's not a bragging system. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a natural outflow of the love that we have for what was done for us. And it's, I question sometimes how much love there is when we're bragging about it. Now, I want you to imagine for a second there's, there you are, you're standing in the middle of a road, of a winding road. You don't know it, but there's a bus coming 70 miles an hour. And if it hits you, it will kill you. As it comes around the corner, it's about three seconds, maybe two seconds away from hitting you. A man, let's just call him Bob, jumps out, rescues you, pushes you out of the way, and he takes your death. He takes death so you don't have to. He literally gives his life to save your life. I imagine you'd be very thankful. Now let's imagine a year later, there you are, and you, Bob did something really special for you. Now, we've got two different kind of people here, maybe with their message. Now, I want you to ask yourself, which audience is going to be more drawn to Bob? If the real goal is to lead people to Bob and to know Bob's goodness, one message might be this. The bulk of it is, hey, let me tell you guys a little story here about Bob. You know, Bob did this for me, and here's, check it out. I found his mom. And she couldn't afford her mortgage, so I gave her a thousand dollars to help her out. I did. And then I found Bob's kids and I gave them each a thousand dollars to help with their, their college tuition. I sure did. And he's got a sister too. Last week I went out and I mowed her lawn. I really did. I want you to imagine the audience. Do you think the audience, as I carry on for 40 minutes, about all these things that I've done for Bob and his family. Do you think they're sitting there just like falling in love with Bob? Do you think their affections and their hearts are just like, wow, Bob is, oh my God, I, I want to know this Bob. Or is what they're doing, sitting there getting bored out of their mind, like I don't want to go hear another 45 message again about what Mike's doing for Bob and him telling us that we need to be doing that for our Bob, too. We need to get out there and get on fire. Now, I know, again, the religious ego says, oh, so you're saying it's not important to do things uh, for Bob, if you will? 
Uh, and I'd say, no, I think it's part of the natural uh, human life to want to do things. It's, a, it's just an outflow of love to do things for Bob and his family. But I don't think people want to hear me bragging about it. And I don't think they need me to guilt them into doing things. I think if they've got their Bob, they're in love with Bob and his kindness to them, and they're going to do things uh, that, that show that and reflect that, okay? Now, imagine there's another guy, same story, and he's up on his pedestal, and he's got his microphone, and he's got his audience. And he's not talking at all about what he's done for his family. He's not saying anything about it. He's got one message. Guys, i got to tell you this story. There I was about to die. A bus is coming 70 miles an hour. Literally, I'm two seconds away from death. This guy, Bob, I mean, he's got his whole life ahead of him. Heck, he's 28 years old, 30 years old. He runs out, and at the right time, he pushes me out of the way, knowing that he's going to die in my place. Guys, this guy, Bob, is amazing. I couldn't believe it. I'm telling you guys, he would do the same thing for you. I've never, I never knew this guy before this. And he saved me. Who do you think is more attractive and, and wants to know this Bob? The guy whose message is, all I want to talk about is what Bob did for me. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm probably doing a lot, but I don't, you don't care about that. Does the audience want to hear all the stuff you're doing and be guilted into doing it? Or is what's going to, if your real goal is to draw them to Bob, then what should at least 90% of your message be about? About what you need to do or what Bob did for you? You see, sermons, these behavior and, uh, improvement programs and workspace things, we're taking a couple of verses, elevating them out of context, and we're boring people to death. People go to church two or three times, and they don't come back because they're not falling in love with Jesus. The message needs to be not about what we're doing for God, right? Yes, do for God, but that doesn't need to be our message, and we don't need to guilt people to do it. The message needs to be is, do you know who Jesus is? Do you know how amazing Jesus is? You got to hear this story about Jesus and what he did for me, and he'll do it for you. This is how much he loves you, and that's the gospel. That's what draws people to Jesus. No one is going to sit in a church and hear this lifeless story about how awesome you are and how awesome we all need to be too so we can be like you. Uh, it doesn't draw people to Jesus. Yes, some people are getting saved through that, not because of that message. They're hearing Jesus, and in the end, they want to, they want to know Jesus. But if your goal is to get the hearts and affections of the lost, we've got to stop talking about behavior improvement sermons. And we've got to talk about what Jesus did for us, not about what we did for him. God is not needy. God is not looking back to be paid back. God wants our heart. And the best way to do that is to talk about what God did for us. And he expects nothing in return. He just wants our hearts. God bless.